Good morning. It's great to meet with you for worship again. And today I've been asked to help us think for the next few minutes about respect. Now, I often hear children talking about the need to respect other people, which is really good. I wonder if you know what respect means. Have a couple of moments in your class to think about what it means. I guess you shared lots of different ideas about what you think respect means. The way I understand respect is something like this. To treat someone in a way that shows you value them and think they are important, even if you are different from them and don't always agree with them. Next, I'd like you to spend a few moments thinking in your classes about some of the people you respect the most. And you might also like to think about why you particularly respect these people. I've got some pictures now of different people. Some of them are real, some of them are just characters from films. And I want you to show on your fingers, one to 10, uh, how much you respect each one of them. One means you don't respect them very much at all. 10 means you have a huge amount of respect for them. Now, you might not especially like all of these people, but try not to think too much about that. Try and focus on whether you respect them or not for the things they do, for the things they say, for the way they live and behave. Because I think even if you don't necessarily like somebody, you might still respect them for the kind of people that they are. Harry, Duke of Sussex. Emma Watson, the actress who played Hermione Granger.
Boris Johnson. Usain Bolt, the 100 metre world record holder. Little Mix. Our Queen, Elizabeth II. Woody from Toy Story. Gareth Southgate, the England football manager. God. Yourself. Now, lots of you will know that the Bible tells us that God made the world and everything in it. And at the end of each day that he created something, the Bible says. And God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, we read this. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over all the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. I wonder whether you've heard these verses from the Bible before. They tell us that God made people us in God's image. When we look in a mirror, we see our own image. We see it ourselves, don't we? And the Bible tells us that God made people, God made us, in his image, which means that there are some things about us that are just like God. Now, we're not completely the same as God, of course. We're not God himself. But we, as humans, are more like God than any of the other living creatures that he's made. And the Bible tells us that God deserves our respect. And there's a story in the book of Luke in the New Testament part of the Bible that shows us one of the ways that we can respect God. We find this in Luke chapter 18 and it's verse 9 to 14. This is what it says. Jesus told a story to some people who thought they were better than others and who looked down on everyone else. He said, two men went into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood over by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not greedy, dishonest and unfaithful in marriage like other people. And I am really glad that I am not like that tax collector over there. I go without eating for two days a week and I give you one tenth of all the money I earn. The tax collector stood off at a distance and did not think he was good enough even to look up towards heaven. He was so sorry for what he had done that he pounded his chest and prayed, God have pity on me, I am such a sinner. Then Jesus said, when the two men went home, it was the tax collector and not the Pharisee who was pleasing to God. If you put yourself above others, you will be put down. But if you humble yourself, you will be honoured. Which one of these two men showed God the respect he deserves, do you think? Well, of course, it was the tax collector. And I have to say, it's quite rare in the Bible to speak about tax collectors in a good way. But the Pharisees were a group of people that thought they were better than others. They thought they were more important than others. And they thought they could make themselves good enough for God by keeping lots of rules. They just didn't get that what is far more important to God is our friendship with him, where we realise that nothing we do can ever make us good enough for him. But because of how good God is, he loves us just as we are the good things about us 
and the bad things about it. And the tax collector knew this, didn't he? He knew that there were things about him that were bad. And that's what he meant when he called himself a sinner. And this is partly what being humble means. Recognising that we are not perfect. That there are things about us that are bad and wrong. And the tax collector knew that he could never be good enough for God. But he knew that God loved him anyway. And this is a really good example of how we can respect God. And if the Bible teaches us to respect God, God who created the world and everything in it, including people, including us. And if it teaches us that we are made in God's image, then surely we should respect ourselves too. I wonder whether you've ever thought about whether you respect yourself before. Here are some questions for you to think about. They're quite hard questions, but give them a go just quietly in your own mind for a couple of minutes. Do you think you're important? Do you think you have value? Who are the people you're important to? Why are you important to them? Well, I really hope that you were able to answer yes to the first two questions and that you were able to name some of the people who you are important to and think about why you're important to them. Here's something to help you a bit more with that. We've already thought a bit about how the Bible tells us that God made the world and everything in it. And we only have to look at the world around us to see how creative God is and all the different types of living things that there are for us to enjoy. And God is just as creative with people. Although there are things about all of us that are the same, we're all unique, aren't we? And there are things that are different about us to everyone else in our family, in our class and in the whole world. I'm sure lots of you will have heard about and seen this beautiful book called The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. And I was listening to Charlie Mackesy, the author and illustrator, reading it on the radio the other evening. And one of the bits that I particularly love is this. It says, always remember you matter. You're important and you are loved. And you bring to this world things no one else can. Here's another tricky thing to think about. What are some of the things you think you bring to the world that no one else can? If that's a bit tricky, think about what you bring into your family or to your class that no one else can. In other words, what are you really good at that no one else that you know is any good at?
So we've spent some time in our worship today thinking about respect and how the Bible teaches us to respect God. And because we are made to be like him in some ways, that we should respect ourselves too. So next time you're thinking about respect, I hope that as well as thinking about respecting others, which is always a good thing to think about, that you'll also remember to think about respecting God and yourself as well. Let's finish with a prayer. And if you'd like to join in with it, you can either do that by reading along with me or just by joining in and saying Amen with me at the end. Dear God, thank you for all we can learn in the Bible about you. Thank you for creating us in some ways to be like you. Help us to respect you and respect ourselves through the ways we think and speak and act. Amen.